What's going on YouTube? It's your main man King Bishop coming to you guys with the day 15, I believe, update. Something like that. Oh man, to get started as always, man, I want to welcome everybody who is new to the page. I appreciate you all for subscribing and commenting and liking and all that kind of great stuff. Um, I am having a ball interacting with you guys. You guys are making YouTube very, very fun for me, so I appreciate you. Um, I got a question for y'all before we really get started, man. I want to know if y'all think it's really time or if I should wait before I do a live stream. Would you guys tune in for it or you want to wait a little while till we got a little bit more to cover? Because a lot of people got a lot of questions and I think the live streaming will make it make me able to answer a lot of questions at one time and make it so that uh, I can answer maybe 10 or 15 people's questions at, the, at one time. So, um, you know, as always, usually if you got a question, there's usually somebody got the same question. So let me know about that. But in other news, um, as you guys know, I went home last week for the first time in, you know, about three weeks and I was able to pick up my Twit card. So in the process of me picking up my Twit card, I was able to go on the port for the first time yesterday, which was Monday. So, man, I was shell shocked, man. It, it was it was crazy. I was lost. I didn't really know what to do. Um, my business partner tried to give me instructions, but you know, it's one of those things where you really don't know until you got to go through it. You know, like. He try to tell you, oh, well, you know, you just do this, and after you do this, you do that. But in that whole process, I never really got directions in the port. Um, so as I rode through the port, I was talking to security, and security was guiding me in the right direction. It was actually really easy to find the customer. But in the process, I really just found another one of the customer's trailers, which I won't say the name of the customer that we primarily pull for on the port, but... I just found another trailer and followed it, you know, trucking the trailer and followed it, and they ended up leading me to the right place. And the port is like serious business, man. Nobody's like, hey, how are you? No, it's like everybody's like quick, quick, snap, snap, want to get you in and out. And I understand because, you know, it does get busy. So in my first day, I had to return a 20-foot uh, container that I had. So I got down there, disconnected the container. Um... Didn't know where to go. Ended up stopping like two or three of the little security cars or whatever they are um, and getting them the appointment in the right direction. Sat around and waited and one of the big crane operators finally came and took the container off the chassis I had, which was an experience in itself because I have never had it happen before. So I didn't know whether I was supposed to get out of the truck or what, you know. And you know, you're not allowed to really videotape there. so. A lot of people, there's not a lot of videos on the process of how the port works with containers. So I was kind of guessing at it based on what people had told me. So I got it done, had to go a couple miles down the road and end up having to call one of my friends because my business partner never gave me the address to the chassis yard. I had to drop the chassis I had, which was a 20 foot and get a 53 foot uh, chassis and go back to the port and get a 53 foot container. And what you guys don't know is that they're not all in the port. Um, so in order to, if you have to get, um, like for instance, I had an empty container that I had to return to the port. Once they take the container off, I have the chassis. So I have to drop off the chassis at the chassis yard, exchange the chassis for the correct size that I need for the next load and go back onto the port. Now, of course, it is a whole lot easier if you know you're dropping off a 53 foot load and then grabbing an empty because you already have the chassis you just kind of gotta let them know and then find the right area to be in which is a task in itself because the port is set up in different sections and <clears throat> they're doing different things in different sections one section may have loaded containers one's gonna have empties you know and then they're broken up into sizes as well so it's kind of it, it was a lot for me yesterday. I ended up burning, um, I want to say about four or five of my hours yesterday in the port, in between the port and the chassis yard, just trying to get adjusted. Um, the load I had to um, go pick up 
was picking up out of Decatur, Georgia, and I was hoping when I got the load to turn it in one day. It was uh, 318 miles, but it was really 362 miles. Um, but I was hoping to turn it in one day or get really, really close to turning it in one day. But that did not happen because I got out of the chassis yard so late. I'm sorry, I got out of the port so late. And then once I got um, rolling and everything, you know, before I got there, it got pretty dark. So I'm in somewhere I've never been before. I've never been through the city of Decatur. And it is a piece of work. So I got through there, man, got to the customer, to the shipper. And it's a dropping hook, so I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, you know, I look down at my clock. I get close. I'm like, all right, I got like four hours left, you know. I can turn and burn. And um, it's supposed to be only about um, five and a half hours back to Jacksonville. So I'm like, dude, I can get, you know, almost there basically and go back to where I wanted to park at. I was going to park in a rest area on um, 16, on Interstate 16. So I get there. And I look to my left where the ship was supposed to be. GPS tell me where I'm where I'm at. Drop a hook, I'm good. And it says, no trucks at this address. I'm like, what? It's pitch black dark out there. I do not know where I am. So I end up having to put it in my truck GPS and I put it in my phone. Ah, <sighs> had a tough go at it. But I end up finding it about 30 minutes later. The back of the building got there. The security was a piece of work. You know, I'm running low on time, and the security is ordering pizza. There's two of them there ordering pizza while I'm trying to get in and out of this place. And, I mean, I'm the only one there as far as who they're working on. It's not like they're busy. They're ordering pizza online, and it took two of them to do it. So they started working on me, and then they would get back to ordering pizza. And I'm like, you know, not to be rude, I didn't say anything because in the end of the day, uh, I'm not a company driver anymore. I'm an owner-operator, so... Um, how I deal with the shippers and the cosignees is how I'm representing my business. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not rude or anything, even though my time is running down. Uh, my time is not a reason to burn a bridge with a potential client in the future, which every time I pull for them, they are escalating my business. So I don't want to be the one and I'm not going to be that guy to ruin a relationship for me or for the company I'm least on to. So, I kind of just dealt with it. That's trucking. Um, I got, you know, dropped my container, got it into a little tight spot. <clears throat> Went to go pick up my new container and I high hooked it. Tr almost high hooked it. The fifth wheel shake went over the fifth wheel. I was at an angle, weird angle, and it was at an incline. And I was rushing. You know, one, I was tired. Two, I was rushing because I was trying to get out of there and go get somewhere to park. So. Ended up having to fix that problem. That took me another 20 minutes. By the time I pre-tripped the trailer and everything, I, get, I looked down. I got about two and a half hours to run after I finish all my paperwork. Get my paperwork. They checked me out. I got two and a half hours to run. So, you know, I looked down. I'm like, all right. I knew that the rest area I wanted to get to was um, at mile marker 46 on 16. So I knew I had about, I want to say about 100 miles or so to get there maybe 120 miles or so to get there maybe a little bit more but about that much so i figured i could make it but traffic was bad on um 7, 75 going into 16 going through um georgia you know they're doing a lot of construction it was a lot of people out for it to be so late it was probably about i think i got out of the ship around 10 15 so it was still it was late but it was cars everywhere man so End up getting lucky, and there's a rest area right there at routes at uh, Interstate 75, right before, like a mile before it merges into 16. And I, I pulled in there, was able to get a good spot, man. I shut it down, man. I was tired. Um, <clears throat> as for today, Tuesday, um, I got the load back. I didn't. My time wasn't good. I didn't park till about 12 o'clock, so my time wasn't good until about 10 o'clock this morning, 9:45, 10 o'clock this morning. As soon as my time was good, I got up, did my pre-trip, got the run, and was able to get the load back about 3.30. And um, was able to go into the port. This time, because I knew where I was going, I knew what to expect it, I was in and out like a breeze. Um, I had a pre-plan for a load um, that was going to Ohio. So I knew that the, it was supposed to pick up a 40-foot chassis, so I knew that the 53-foot chassis I had was no good. 
So I got the loaded container removed, took the chassis to the chassis yard. As I was sitting there, I realized, oh man, this is a hazmat load and I'm not running any more hazmat. Plus I have to get back to the house this weekend. So I said a load to Ohio is probably not gonna work. So I dropped the chassis, went in, went on back to the terminal, which is only about maybe two miles from the chassis yard and was able to deal with my business partner. By that time it was, um, you know, 4.30, 4.45. So I wasn't able to get another load. Um, I basically got to wait until the morning, but it was cool because I wanted to, I got family here in Jacksonville. Um, my second oldest daughter is here in Jacksonville with her aunt and uncle. So I was able to take her to, take her to dinner and, you know, relax, get a good hot shower, you know, play with my niece and nephew a little bit. So I kind of needed that little break, even though I would have preferred to be running. You know, sometimes you got to sit yourself down. You know, sometimes you got to relax and make yourself take a little break. You know, I know we all want to get to the money, but sometimes you got to you got to take that time out just to relax and enjoy the opportunities you have to be out here. So right now I'm, you know, in my truck out here at my family's apartment complex. I'm about to lay it down. Um, I'm going to make another video because someone had asked me about um, what I do for bookkeeping. And in that video, I'm going to show you what I do for bookkeeping. Um, I got to kind of doctor up my paperwork so that you don't see the customer's name or the shipper's name. Um, just for, you know, privacy and confidentiality sake. I don't want to be spreading too much information. I want to get in trouble. But um, I'm going to doctor it up a little bit. And I'll be able to make a video showing you guys what I do. Doesn't mean it's right. Just means it's what I do um, to kind of help with my record keeping and uh, help me monitor my loads. So, as always, in the meantime, man, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I appreciate y'all all for coming. I think we're right at 400 subscribers now, almost at 10,000 views, like 900 and 9,900 and some change in views. So, man, I appreciate y'all so much. Um, hope y'all like the content. And um, just keep keep watching, man. Something, I'm learning something new every day. So as I learn, I want to bring it to you guys. And um, also look out for a video on trip planning, proper trip planning. Um, I'm going to help out some of the newer guys and gals out here who don't know what trip planning is and need a little bit of help. Even the people who are already out here who need a little bit of a couple pointers on some ways to help with trip planning so you don't get caught out, you know, with no hours stuck on the off-ramp. So... As always, y'all, God bless y'all. Be easy. Peace.